This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effect plugins, titling, video editing, and workflow tools for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And one thing I find myself saying more and more these days is create new user settings, especially with the move to the new version of Media Composer, always create new user settings. In this lesson, I want to talk specifically about user settings, not so much about creating user settings because that's fairly self-explanatory, but more so how you can get in and borrow settings. I say borrow, it's more or less taking with the intention of never returning those settings, maybe from a previous version of your settings or even from other users to take the best of their settings and make them your own. All right, and as you can see, we are in the most recent version of Media Composer, and let's call up our settings now. If you're new to this version of Media Composer and you haven't watched my tutorials yet on getting up to speed in the newest version of Media Composer, you will notice that we do not have access to our settings across the top of our project window anymore because this actually isn't the project window anymore. This is actually our bin container that's going to hold all of our bins. Now, to get access to our settings, what we're going to do is we're going to use the keyboard shortcut of Command, Shift, and the equal sign on the keyboard. Control, Shift, and equals for all my friends on Windows machines out there. And this will bring us to our settings. Now, I don't necessarily consider format to be a setting necessarily, but it is in here right now because to be honest, it really doesn't fit anywhere else. Now, we're not going to be talking about format in this lesson. I'm going to be really focusing on project, user, and site settings. Now, if you're accustomed to obviously working in a previous version of Media Composer, you'd be accustomed to one settings window, one settings window to rule them all. And you'd have to scroll through all the different settings. Down the left would be the actual setting, on the right would be the type of setting it is, project, user, or site. Now, of course, that does beg the question, what is the difference between the three? A site setting is a setting that is for your actual system itself. You'll notice things like deck configuration, if you happen to have a deck connected, even video satellite, remote play and capture. This is something that your actual physical you know, piece of hardware is going to be doing. Next, moving down the chain, we have our project setting. Obviously, these settings are attached specifically to the project that I'm currently working in, which is Let's Edit with Media Composer. Last but certainly not least, we have user settings. Now, this is where we're really going to get in and take a look at things in this lesson. Now, with this being said, talking about settings, if you have just upgraded to a new version of Media Composer, the first thing that you are always, 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 always going to do is create a new user setting. I've had so many people say to me, Kev, I'm having this problem. Why doesn't my... You know, why doesn't the top you know, tools on my timeline look the same as yours when you're doing your tutorials? Well, the one thing that you need to keep in mind is that I never go and update any of my, I'll call them my standard shortcuts. You might notice a couple things changed over here in my composer window, but more or less all of these tools up here stay the same. Now I might get in and add a couple over here on the right hand side. You'll see that I have Avid Titler Plus right there as well as audio scrubbing, but everything else all down here is exactly the same. All right, let me just bring my settings right back here. Now, the reason that I do that is two reasons. One, obviously, when I'm teaching you, I want my layout to more or less look exactly the same as your layout, but I also do it for another reason. The other reason that I keep all of my settings exactly the same on the keyboard as well as on the interface is that if I happen to go and sit in front of a different system, whether I'm at my office or at somebody else's office, I want to be able to sit down and start working immediately. Now you're probably thinking, well, Kev, you could just post your settings somewhere and then download them. That already sounds like way too much work. I need to just sit down. I don't need to say, excuse me for one minute while I go and download my settings here and then do, no, I'm just going to sit down and start going. I've got all kinds of things mapped to the shift and keyboard as well as my function keys, which is really where my keyboard shortcuts come into play for that matter. Okay. Now let's just create a new user setting for the sake of doing it. I'm just going to drop this down. You'll see I've actually gone through a few new versions of Media Composer because I have Kevin P. McAuliffe, KPM, and KMAC. And we're going to create a new user profile. You'll notice that you can also import, export, or update user profiles from here as well. Now this is going to be Profile Man. Okay, so Profile Man's settings, once I say go, is going to reset our settings back to scratch. This is exactly the way the system looked when it was first installed. 
Now, let's just have some fun with this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over, I'm going to open one of these bins. doesn't matter which one. Let's open our Primat Studio bin, all right? Now, I'm going to talk specifically about our bin settings here for just one second. You'll notice that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bin settings here. Now, these bin settings correspond directly to the bin settings. Now, I say bin settings. They should be bin views that we have here. They're bin views, not bin settings. We can obviously switch back and forth between any one that we want. And if we come in and we add one, I'm just going to call this, you know, KPM, just for the sake of calling it something different, you'll notice that that setting is added right here. Okay. Now, at any given time, if you don't want to use any of these bin views, which normally I don't, I sort of have two or three bin views, you can simply select from here, delete them all. I'll leave KPM for now. I can delete them all and they're now all gone. Now, where does this really come into play? <laughs> right here. Now, I can appreciate all these preset export settings. To be honest, I don't use any of them, not one of them. I use all my own export settings. So what I'm going to do is simply select them all except the active one, which I cannot delete. Okay, and I'm going to delete those. Now, what's also cool in here is this is where you can get in and see different workspace views. And at any point, if you need to get in and see what any of these settings actually are, you can simply double click on them to call them up. Now, Here's where a lot of people sort of start to give me backlash with the whole creating new user settings because people say, well, Kev, I don't want to have to rebuild my user settings, you know, each time I have to create a new user. That's why I don't bother doing it. Well, that's an excuse. OK, and I'm going to show you why it's an excuse. So I just basically blew away all of my bin settings, my export settings. I still have my keyboard settings here, which is fine. And what I'm going to do is, even though I've created a new user setting, I can still bring back some of the old settings I had in a previous user setting. Now, you'll notice if I select a bin, I press Command or Control and O on the keyboard. This lets me open a bin. Okay, If I cancel this now and I click on my settings, if I now press Command or Control and O on the keyboard, What's going to happen is Media Composer, what it should do here, let me just come back here, it's going to open, there we go, it's going to open a setting or preference file. So now all I have to do is direct Media Composer to the users, shared, Avid Media Composer. We're going to go into the users, into my user folder, and you'll see there are the user profiles that we have on the system right now, the one I just created plus the two previous ones. So let's go back to my one from September 7th here. I'm just going to twirl that down. I'm going to grab that XML file and I'm going to say open. And now if you see what Media Composer has basically done is it's opened up all of the settings in one window, just the user settings keep in mind. So for example, if I wanted to take the bin settings from here, the bin view, I keep calling them bin settings, the bin view from that KMAX settings and drag it into this user profile, I can do it just like such and you'll notice that it updates immediately. I can take export settings, for example, and do the exact same thing. Now you'll see, do I want to add these settings to the current settings or do I want to use them to replace the active settings? I'm just going to add them in there like such. OK, so this is now how we can get in and start dragging the different settings that we have set the way that we like from a previous user setting into this current user setting. So this way we have little to no downtime and you now have the ability to, I'm not going to say steal, but to borrow some settings from other editors that you work with, stuff that they like, so that you don't have to get in and rebuild these settings yourself. All right, now as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you to check out our sponsors, Video Guys, for all of your Avid software and hardware, as well as thousands of other products that you can check out over at videoguys.com. I also want to give a big shout out to the team at Boris FX, makers of BCC, Sapphire, and Mocha. And don't forget to use that coupon code of MC101 to get 10% off your next BCC license. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget, if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, don't hesitate to send them to me at Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.